Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's day 556 of our three-year journey through the Word of God, and we come to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 16. Proverbs is a book that we visit on occasion, sort of spread out gradually throughout the three years. And so we're in Proverbs 16, and this actually takes us to the midway point of Proverbs. We're past halfway, 31 chapters in Proverbs. We're past halfway through the reading plan, past halfway now in the book of Proverbs after we do today. So let's pray and ask the Lord's help as we look to him for the wisdom we need in this wonderful book. Father, you are the source of all wisdom. There is no real wisdom but what you give. And your word is is full of wisdom from beginning to end, but we get concentrated doses of it here in Proverbs where we see so much to be so helpful to us in life. So we pray that your spirit would write this word on our hearts today, help us to understand it, help us to respond by faith to it and to live it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked, for the day of trouble. Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. By steadfast love and faithfulness, iniquity is atoned for, and by the fear of the Lord one turns away from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. An oracle is on the lips of a king. His mouth does not sin in judgment. A just balance and scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to do evil, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of a king, and he loves him who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, and a wise man will appease it. In the light of a king's face there is life, and his favor is like the clouds that bring the spring rain. How much better to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. Whoever gives thought to the word will discover good, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. The wise of heart is called discerning, and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. Good sense is a fountain of life to him who has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise makes his speech judicious and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. There is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way to death. A worker's appetite works for him, His mouth urges him on. A worthless man plots evil, and his speech is like a scorching fire. A dishonest man spreads strife, and a whisperer separates close friends. A man of violence entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. Whoever winks his eyes plans dishonest things. He who purses his lips brings evil to pass. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision 
is from the Lord. That's Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16 has several important sections which kind of group uh, Proverbs together thematically. And the whole of it, we can really see the sovereignty of God, the providence of God that overrules everything. The last verse here in verse 33 says, The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. That means seemingly random things. A lot, casting lots is something that you do that seemingly is at random, like tossing dice or picking numbers out of a hat. It seems to be random, but it is completely controlled by the Lord. And then if we go back to the first verse, we see the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Here we have things that are deliberately planned by men, by people, and yet the success or failure of it, the answer of the tongue to those plans is from the Lord. So together, these opening and closing verses of Proverbs 16 are telling us that whether something is carefully planned or whether something seems completely random, the Lord is in charge of everything. The intentional decisions of plans that people make, the random, seemingly random activity, all of it is under the Lord's sovereignty. The first major section here in Proverbs 16 is in verses 1 through 9, and it's bracketed by this idea that whatever you plan the Lord is the one who brings it about or doesn't bring it about. So we read verse 1. Look at the end of this section in verse 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. So those two verses, bracket verses 1 through 9, is under this theme of plans made, you know, are are really in the hands of the Lord. So, so what should we do then? If that is true, that whatever our plans are, God is ultimately going to either see them through and establish them, or he's going to frustrate them and undermine them. If that's true, what should we do? Well, verse 3 would tell us to commit our work to the Lord, that our plans may be established. Verse 4 tells us that when things go wrong, we need to know that God has a purpose for everything, even the wicked for the day of trouble. So, Sometimes the righteous plans of righteous people can be frustrated by the activity of the wicked that come in the day of trouble. The Lord is even sovereign over that, and so we need to trust him through that. We can easily become arrogant in making and carrying out our own plans. And so verse 5 tells us everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. You might see someone who's arrogant and who makes grandiose plans and who even succeeds in those grandiose plans. And King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon comes to mind as a man who he set out to create the largest empire the world had ever known and he did it. And he set out to create the most beautiful city the world had ever known and he did it. And at the height of his power, he said, is this not the great Babylon which I have made for my glory? And God said, oh no, you didn't. And just like that, his mind was gone. And he lived like an insane person for a period of time, for seven periods of time. So when we're making plans, we need to commit our work to the Lord. We need to trust that even when troublesome things happen, even things that are caused by wicked people, God has a purpose in that. We need to not become arrogant, but we need to make sure that we are looking to the Lord for his steadfast love and faithfulness to atone for our iniquity and help us to turn away from evil as we carry out our plans so that our plans are pleasing to the Lord. And then we may see that even our enemies are at peace with us. But whether our plans prosper or fail, it's good to know that it's better to have a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. So this is the overall theme of verses 1 through 9. Starting in verse 10, we start to get to uh, the rule of kings. So anybody might carry out plans, but here we have sovereign governance or the government of the king. That's especially the theme in verses 10 through 15. And there's words of warning to the king, right, that the king uh, should not do evil. It's an abomination for kings to do evil, for the throne is established by righteousness. It's also words to those who are maybe in a position to speak to the king that righteous lips are the delight of a king, and he loves him who speaks wrath, or those who 
are looking for favor or justice from a king. You can know that in the light of a king's face there's life and his favor is like the crowd clouds that bring the spring rain but on the converse to that verse 14 a king's wrath is like a messenger of death and a wise man will appease it so here in verses 10 to 15 we have much wisdom for governance that governance should be done righteously should be done according to justice and righteousness right that establishes a throne um, when making judgments, a just balance and scales are the Lord's, and that if you have an opportunity to speak to those in power, you should speak righteously to them, and you should not like lie to them or trick them or flatter them, because in the end, God is in control. That's the overarching theme of Proverbs 16. God rules even over the king. Verse 16 is a reminder, if it's found throughout Proverbs, that it's better to get wisdom than gold or silver. I saw this earlier in chapter 16. Better is a little with righteousness than great wealth, but with wickedness. Um, verse 19 re reinforces this. Better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. The world is constantly telling us that we should chase our dreams, we should chase power, we should want money, we should want fame, we should want a good reputation. God tells us no. The things that are worth pursuing are righteousness and justice and humility and the fear of the Lord. Whoever gives thought to the word, verse 20, will discover good and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. The blessing worth having, the blessing of God, is for those who give thought to the word of God and who trust in the Lord of that word. Um, in verse 24, Actually, verse 23 and following, you have some words about our words. Words about words, right? Uh, if you have a wise heart, your speech will be judicious and will be persuasive because it will be coming from a place of sincere wisdom. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness. There's a way that seems right to man, but in the end, its way is death. And this 25 to 30 unpacks this next section, which is about actually 25 to 32, all about how people... If they're just doing what they think is right in what seems right to them, not what they think is right, but rather what seems right to them. You understand the difference between that, right? What I think is right is what I'm thinking is right versus wrong. But what seems right to me is what pleases me, what satisfies me. So that could be a worker's appetite, a worthless man who's plotting evil, a dishonest man who's spreading strife, a whisperer separating close friends, a man of violence who's enticing his neighbor, someone who's winking his eyes to plan dishonest things. All of these are people who are doing what is right in their own eyes. So in other words, what seems right in, the other, in order to get them what they want. And at the end of it, no, it's a way that leads to death. It is a way that will bring you under the judgment of God. The contrast of that is verse 31. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. So often people who go down the path that's described in verses 25 to 30 are people who die early. I mean, you've seen it, right? You probably know people who've been down that road, or you can certainly watch the news and see people who go down that road. You die early. But a long life generally is the pattern for those who are slow to anger, who live righteously, who rule their spirit, and who trust the Lord. So Proverbs 16, that's the wisdom of Proverbs 16. Where do we see Jesus in all of this? Well, you might say, well, Jesus always did what was right and always pleased the Lord, and he was righteous in all of his ways, and his life was cut short at a young age. That may seem to go against the wisdom of Proverbs, but oh no. God vindicated him and gave him an eternal life, an undying life, an unquenchable life that we now live because he lives. And so Jesus is the fulfillment. He's the righteous king. He's the righteous man. He's wisdom personified. He trusted the Lord in everything. Even, even the casting of the lots for his clothing, a seemingly random thing happening at the foot of the cross, was foretold specifically in Psalm 22, which Jesus quoted Psalm 22 while he was on the cross, letting us know that he was trusting in the Lord for everything that was happening to him. So Jesus is, as we see again in Proverbs, the embodiment of wisdom. 
and the righteous man. And ultimately, the way for us to walk according to Proverbs is to walk by faith in Christ. The way to walk in wisdom is to walk in the one who is wisdom. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the gift of life in your son, Jesus Christ. He is the wisdom we need. He's the king that we need. He's the truth teller that we need. He's the sovereign judge that we need. And he's the savior and the righteousness that we need. Help us to follow Jesus today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's Proverbs 16 tomorrow. We're back to First Chronicles. Hope you can join me for that. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Thank you.